So what is the real state of U.S.-Russia relations in these tumultuous times? One man with a good idea of that is Stephen Cohen. He's a professor emeritus of Russian studies at Princeton and NYU. He's the editor at The Nation magazine, and he actually speaks Russian, which is helpful when talking about Russia. Professor Cohen joins us tonight. Professor, what is the view from Russia? What does the Russian government make of everything that's happened in the last week? They think we're crazy, completely crazy, for all the reasons you just discussed with that guest of yours and what you said about Tulsi Gabbard. I mean, you quoted the uh, Russian Prime Minister, Dmitry Medvedev, saying we're on the brink of war. He also said, and I've been doing this 40 years, I don't remember a Soviet or post-Soviet leader saying this, Medvedev said American-Russian relations are absolutely ruined. Ruined. What's important is, is Medvedev is considered to be the most pro-Western member of the Putin leadership. He's the guy that uh, Obama and Clinton tried to base the reset on. So your previous guest, I, I don't mean to be rude to him, but first of all, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And secondly, he excludes the reality that Russia has a politics. And the politics in Russia today as we talk is if not the conviction, the concern that America is preparing war against Russia. If not in Syria, then on the two other Cold War fronts, Ukraine or right. the Baltic, where NATO is building up in an unprecedented way. So Russia is really, really wound tight, and this is not good because they have nuclear weapons and because accidents happen. The one tiny piece of good news is that the new American Secretary of State, Rex Tillerson, who's been slurred in this country as Putin's friend because he made a wonderful deal for ExxonMobil, which he headed, for Russian vast oil reserves under the sea. The Russians, and Putin in particular, know him very well. And they never would have made this multi-billion dollar deal with him if they right. didn't think he was a serious, honorable, and reliable man. So two things happened. Putin, who was not supposed to meet with Tillerson, because a lot of the political class in Russia didn't want him to, did meet with him. And I guarantee you, they had a conversation that essentially came down to this. Rex, says Putin, what in the world is going on in Washington? What is this Kremlin gate about that trumps our puppet? And by the way, says Putin. There is no evidence, and you haven't produced the evidence, that Assad uh, committed this chemical weapon act. So something between these two men went on that is exceedingly important for the matter of war and peace. And I think what Tillerson said afterward suggested that they did have a candid conversation. So, so may, I ask you, may I ask you a question here? What, as far as you can tell, is the motive, particularly on the American left, we only have a minute left, but sum it up for us, for pushing conflict with Russia. This is an utter role reversal from 30 years ago, and I find it baffling. What's at the root of it? You, you've been a man of the left uh, for most of your life. What is this about? I, I'm, like, I'm like a uh, reformed alcoholic. I have no memory of my previous life. I don't know what left and right are, to be honest, Tucker. Yeah. They're geography to me. I mean, we have issues, and what you've been doing on your broadcast shows is that you're concerned with issues less than left or right. But what's happened in Washington, uh, this attempt to portray Trump as a puppet of the Kremlin, is convincing Russia that the American Warfare Party is behind this. And my concern is, is that Russia will overreact. Right. That seems like a legitimate concern uh, for a country well, I, with let me, as many I, nuclear give weapons. Give me five seconds. Way. I'm not anyway. young. I've been doing this 40 years, sometimes as a professor, sometimes inside, and I have never been as worried as I am today about the possibility of war with Russia. Those are ominous words, and you would hate to think that the root of all of this is political expedience. That would really be a shame, and a lot of people would be culpable for that. Yes. Yes. Professor, thank you very yes. much for joining us.